sofa6.co.uk sponsors of the haze out yes indeed <coughs> for tis a monday night all the sound right now apparently so mm. i hope so but if it all does go horribly wrong i've got all the knobs along behind uh, the table behind right so i can fiddle and I've put the little doodah up there. I've put that little computer there because very boring apparently was getting, uh, he was getting, what's the word I'm looking for? He was getting hypnotised by the little lights that go up and down. All right. It's hypnotising him. Oh, well, I can't see those, of course. No, well, neither can he now because I've put that oh, in the way. Right. That would, these, this is the technicality stuff. Good evening. How are you all doing? I hope and trust that you are extremely well walking about and breathing and stuff like that. This is the Here's Hour. There'll be titles as well. But I am joined in the studio tonight by my best mate, Keith. Good evening. Who's, uh, he's my best mate and he's been getting new garden chairs. Which is all good. So we'll be laid out in the... In the, in the, in the but you have as well. Well, I know that. I was going to say that as well. Oh. So we'll be sat outside with our e cigs giving it all vapor tanks, giving it hot licks, and enjoying the summer sun in about six months' time. Rather than the fog. Yes, exactly right. And and in the big, mega, mega, huge cat house tonight, we've got cat. That's why it's called the cat house. How are you diddling tonight, Cocker? All right. I'm canny. I'm canny, you know. <laughs> canny. Very good. You been up to much exciting today? Aside from what we were going to talk, what we are going to talk about later. No, no, nothing exciting that I can remember. Really? But then again, you never know. I mean, I've got a rotten memory. You do surprise me. <laughs> yes. You haven't been getting any garden chairs, have you? No. No. It's always, always worth asking. Straight answer. Yeah, absolutely right. Been getting any garden chairs? No. Well, tonight, 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 we're going to talk about some technology that uses Bluetooth on an e-cig, and both Chris and I have one. Um, and we've had mixed levels of success, which is interesting of itself. There's uh, apparently Hobbycraft, believe it or not, where we got the, the Rico cotton yarn. I keep calling it cotton wool, but patently it's not that. They've gone crackers, and there's, there's about 53 other types of cotton there, so I've got a whole host of that as well. And Keith's brought a piece of uh, newspaper clipping in, which got me started on a mini rant before we even came into the studio. So it's going to all be good. Um, and that will be after the titles, assuming I can find them. I can't be there. So are we ready, chaps? We know how this happens, don't we? We do. So it's hello, good evening, and welcome to... The, the His, His Hour. 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 Yes, we actually got that in unison, and apparently Chris Chap doesn't like it when we get it right. <laughs> this is boring when it's in unison. I thought we <laughs> always got. Right. I thought we always got it right. Well, usually there's one of us behind the other two. It's usually me. It's usually her. Well, I wouldn't have said that, Chris. Oh, I would. I know where I come. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, look, we've got Chap behind us as well. This is this is silly. Oh, yes. yes, there you go. Right, let's. I'm going to start with this newspaper clippage. I am. That's where I'm going to start with. From start from with. I'll go to close you up. You can for this. There it is. Look, straight out the 1970s. Anger after Sun 13 by his electronic cigarette. That's that. I'll read. I've got to turn it. I'll try it this wheel. A fuming father has sounded a warning after his 13-year-old son bought an electronic cigarette substitute. 
There are no current laws to stop youngsters buying devices such as vapour pens and e-cigarettes, which mimic the effect of the real thing. Vapour pens produce a vapour that is potentially less harmful than cigarette smoke and free of some of its damaging substances such as tar. Oh, bugger it. Although there are plans to change the law to prevent under-18s buying the products, says here, Dad Neil Pilkington of Sunderland said action should be taken straight away after his teenage son came home with one. He said, my son bought this in a city centre shop. He was doing nothing wrong and the shop was doing nothing wrong. <laughs> yes, quite. Hang on a minute. <coughs> I went nowhere and nothing happened. Where well, there's the story in this, but never mind. But surely there is something morally dubious about selling these products to children. I'm happy that an adult can have the option of stopping smoking by using these products, but we are talking about children. And children shouldn't be buying products designed for adults. An estimated 1.3 million people in the UK use e-cigarettes which, which were designed to help smokers quit. The battery-powered devices, which can be bought online and in some pubs, chemists and news agents across the city deliver a hit of addictive nicotine and emit water vapour to mimic the feeling and look of smoking. Earlier this year, the government announced plans to ban <coughs> their sales to under-18s. Um, morally dubious. Morally dubious. You keep wondering if at least parts of that are fictitious uh -huh. when you read it uh, again. Well, yeah, um, I mean, I'm looking at it here and, and the fuming... I mean, I've got to ask the question, and I'm going to ask the question. What kind of parent goes to the local rag rather than giving his kid a good clip round the lug or a smack across the arse <coughs> when he's found him doing something he didn't? That's the first question. Second one was, we don't know at this moment in time whether Junior, 13-year-old, was actually on the old Lambert and Butlers or the Rollies anyway and got this thing as a substitute because he wanted to pack in small. That's the third thing. Third thing, at the moment, it's not illegal to sell them to under 18s. Fine. Um, so the shop was doing nothing wrong and he was doing nothing wrong. So I kind of say there's a story there. Um, and then I just find the wording somewhat strange for a, a yes. Sunderland bloke. Yes. Phrases like morally dubious. Yes. They're not exactly what you would expect of uh, City Centre yeah. Sunderland, are they? Well, uh, uh, right, if this kid was a smoker, right, he's decided to try, in inverted commas, a substitute. But if he wasn't, why did he buy it? And why did he share the fact he'd bought it with his father in the first place? Yes, it doesn't say how the dad <coughs> found out. Do you, do, you, do you know any more about this, Chris? Because it does say it's out here. Was there any more online? No, that that's the same article I've got, but um, it, it's a bit, as you say, fabricated is the word that came to mind. I mean, as you rightly have pointed out, first of all, you'd be given the kid hell if you didn't approve. Yes. And secondly, you'd go to the shop, right? And you'd be saying, what the hell are you thinking of selling my son, blah de blah blah de blah where the newspaper would come into your line of thought, I really don't know. Well, just just quickly, Nicky Trant has said, if my 13-year-old had come home with one, you'd <laughs> be looked down, you'd be too ashamed to go at the papers and scalp his ass and then talk about the recoil of Jennings. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's the point. I mean, the point has been made, and it's a point that is very, very well made. What would Daddy have said to the papers if 13-year-old had come back with a packet of Lamberts or a, a pouch of drum and some Rizzlers, mm. what would Daddy have said then? And more to the point, what would Daddy have been most upset about of the two? Which should Daddy have been most upset about? Now, Mr Pilkington, if you're watching, <laughs> don't take <coughs> this in any way that I'm getting at you. Don't please be under the misapprehension that I'm getting at you. I'm not. I think you've done wrong. I'm not getting at you. I think your behaviour is appalling, frankly. To go to the papers in the first place and complain about a kid doing something that actually you should have taught him better about. Because the essence of parenting 
is to let children know what is right and what is wrong and the reasons why things are right and things are wrong. And it is wrong for a 13 year old to go and purchase an electronic cigarette for his or her own use if he has never smoked. It is right, however, for a 13 year old to go and purchase an e-cigarette if he is already <coughs> a smoker and wants to find something that's not going to do him any harm. And I would really like to know which way the story actually goes. But the whole notion of going and blabbing to the paper with something like this, I expect to see you on Jeremy Kyle having a DNA test to find out which branch of the primates you're actually descended from. Because I think the action is idiotic. There you go. I just think it's odd that it's ended up as an article in the paper. I, I could have understood it more if the guy had written a letter about his son mm -hmm. and the experience and, 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 and put his complaint, for want of a better word, in a letter form, like a lot of people do to the press. Mm -hmm. But, you know, has he gone to a reporter? Has he picked up the phone and rang the Echo? Has he sent them an email? Uh, that, I'm suspicious about it. You're suspe I'm sus are you suspicious as well, Chris? <laughs> um, yes and no. I, th I think I'm suspicious about the, the way it's been written. That's obviously not the yes. father wrote that. Um, but it depends on what the father has been reading. Because if you think about it, and you, we've seen some of the shitty press that's out there, you know, and some of the facts that are fiction. Mm -hmm. um, the scaremongering that's been going on. Now, if he's been reading a lot of that and see his missus had been wanting to go down the route of trying an e-cig and he'd been reading up on it, he may very well have been terrified that his son was going to set the house on fire or something like that. It is possible, you know, and I'm playing devil's advocate here. Yes, yes. But it is possible that he's been outraged, but my first port of call wouldn't have been to ring a newspaper exactly. if I felt like that. Exactly. I would have if I'd got went to the shop and got into an argument with the proprietor you know and he'd sort of said well I didn't do anything wrong blah de blah then it's possible that he's got in touch with the newspaper although personally I would have contacted <coughs> Trade and Standards not a newspaper but you see, let's there are be... reasons that people might <coughs> because some people like to see their name yeah. address well, well, let's be fair, if that had been in my day, and I would suspect in yours, would have been a clip round the ear, yeah. and that would have been an end of the matter. Well, I mean, <coughs> e-cigs e weren't invented when I was a young man. Well, no. But I got nabbed by my dad at the age of, I would be 14. Yes. He found me packet of fags. They were yes. Camerons. And he said, right, that's it. I'll do it to you the same as my dad did to me. This was, this was the measure, this was the measure of my father's intelligence. I'm here to tell you, my dad was a twenty a day smoker all the time. I knew, right? So when he caught me smoking, he said, "Right, I'm going to do to you what my dad did to me, and that'll stop you smoking." And I'm sitting thinking, "All right, what did my granddad do to you to stop you smoking? Because patently it didn't work." But never mind. Okay then, Dad, <coughs> what we're going to do? And he got a packet of twenty out, his packet of twenty, Embassy Number Ones as they were, the Red Embassy. And he said, right, you're going to smoke all that packet? I said, fine. <coughs> so I got it, and he thought, I think, after I'd gone through five or six, I'd have been vomiting all over the place, and he was a little bit pissed off when I got to the end of the packet of 20 and said, is there another one? I'm not finished these. Is there any more? Uh -huh. No, it would have been Captain, Capstan full strength that would have made you sick, you know, and the salmon-coloured packet. Oh, I remember them. God. Well, that's, you see, that was what I'd been smoking. <laughs> around the place. I just had the Camerons in my pocket that day because I hadn't been able to get any caps in full strength. I was a man. I had a hairy chest. Is that what you were smoking? Why caps I caps in full, full strength, strength in senior service? Well, probably better than woodbines. Anything's so. better than woodbines. But well, yes. I was about 13 and got caught. And <coughs> I had the same thing. And then 
two days later when my mother went absolutely ballistic with me and two days later when she'd calmed down and thought about it she said right if you want a cigarette you smoke in the house and you can smoke mine that was a big mistake saying that. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> But in those days, she was a very keen smoker because she smoked Kensidus and you got the little um, tokens inside for a free gift. Oh, yes. And it yes. depended on what she was saving up for as to how many cigarettes she smoked. Oh, right. It's like that. That's uh, it's like the embassy coupe ones that you used to get. Aye. And the yes. song had got written, Matt Monroe did the song on that. Remember the night you fell in the shite, you had your best suit on. The oh one that God. you got from saving a lot to <laughs> embassy coupons. That was the song, wasn't it? If you say so. I've never heard that one. But Why I? <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, that was, that was what I got told. And I remember my father saying, smoke in the house, yes, but do not smoke on the street. Well, Dwarf, you smoked on the street. You were a lady of easy virtue. I always used to look for lasses that were smoking in Scarborough. A lady never would smoke in the street. No. Well, no, I wasn't looking for ladies. I was looking for lasses that were smoking in the street because I'd been told by my mother from, from being that, that high. A lady never smokes in the street. Any, If you see a lady smoking in, or a woman smoking in the street, she's a woman of I, easy I virtue. I remember my mother would never smoke outside publicly. No. Really? No. Well, there you go, you see. My, my mum was the same until, well, until the last couple of years. We would take her down on the front and she'd have a fag. It was all right. But you well, see, I, I, I was stupid when I was caught and I still... Uh, uh, I panicked. Did you? Yeah, there was me and my mate in the, in the house smoking and they came back suddenly. Oh, do you? And... Uh, I said the first thing that came into my head, and when it, completely illogical, I sort of panicked and said, well, it must have been the dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything more stupid to say. Well, I mean, I must admit, you know, in a case like that, when your parents come back and catch you doing something you shouldn't, you do say the first thing that comes into your head. In my case, it was, we were wrestling. Mm. <laughs> While you're panicking, Keith, it's now down 2-0 to uh, West Ham. I've got two. You're joking. No. You're going to upset them, you know that, don't you? God uh -huh. almighty. <coughs> Calm down. Have it. This is going to be curtains. Here, here, here. Curtains. Have some 54 milligrams, son. <laughs> <laughs> See him. 2-0. Two 2-0, nil. Two, nil, two out. That's two goals more than Sunderland's got. That means Sunderland's oh. losing. What? Very boring says his dad was a heavy smoker and he managed to get a video recorder from the Kensidus catalogue. Oh. After ten years saving. God, grief. Dedication. That's 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 dedication to the cause. I think mm -hmm. I think I think the best way he managed to get was a briefcase and I got that given to us for Christmas one year. Mm hmm That's yeah. nice that. You're liking that, are you? Aye. I thought you might somehow. It's way too heavy for the shirt pocket, although I say you've got the big enough. Oh, <sighs> dry. There you go. Yes. No wrong with that. Yes, Nelly Scroggett, no smoking, eating or powdering your nose in public. Quite right. What? I remember those rules. What? Uh, just before we go into the adverts, here's a question for chat. What did red shoes and a ladder up one stop and mean? Because I haven't got a clue. You can tell us when we'll come back. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Super6.co.uk sponsors of the Haze Out.
Save the Six. Sponsors of the Haze Hour. Spoiled my night, that. Was it? Turn out. Could be worse, Keith. Well, it could. You will be by the end of 90 minutes. Probably. Thanks, Chris. That, you know, that really inspires <laughs> confidence. That. God. Um, on, 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 on the subject of my little question before the, uh, the break, Jester did see a red shoe and a ladder up the stock, and means he got there first. And, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I can't remember who said it because they've only just said it was the ladder is actually a stairway to heaven. Well, at least it gets you up to the giggle yeah. band, so-called, because if you get past that, you're laughing. <laughs> Isn't that right? Yes, there you go. Yes. What's this? A ladder is more expensive. More expense. Anyway, somebody actually had the cheek and temerity, the audacity to ask a vaping-related question, <laughs> as in, can <coughs> you replace the threads on an EVIC? And the answer is, yes, you can, if your name's Gary Dibley. And there are other Gary Dibleys available as well, of course, but I'm fairly sure Gary knows how to do such things and has the wherewithal to be able to achieve what is necessary to be able to achieve on an EVIC to do that. I would uh, strongly suggest you get in touch and ask his advice. I think he might be in chat, actually. There you go. Yeah, because there's a special tool you use, isn't there? Yes. That it's called Gary Dibley. <laughs> yes, you can, you can re-thread them and, uh, and you can put new ones on. Oh, Sunderland's got a gold back. It's 1-2. Two one, a oh, one yes one, one two. two. I, uh, Is it at home to Sunderland? Yes. Ah, oh, that explains why the lights were flickering. Got a, I wonder who scored it. It'll be a well, footballer, I would imagine. I would think so. Or a can ball. we can we talk e six? Yes. Uh, yes well, sorry well, about I'll that. I'll tell you what yeah. we'll do. What we'll do. <coughs> right. Hold hold off on the scores, ladies and gentlemen. Hold off on the scores till the end of the show, and then we'll announce it to Keith. And with a little bit of luck and a following wind, they might win. They'll still go down, but they might win. I so you get no more. sympathy out of her. I, well, obviously not from Tyne's side. She's a magpie, well, of course. And then that's obvious. And then uh, who's who's Adam Johnson? Adam Johnson. All oh, right, has he scored? Well, apparently, Vapor Caper says so. Thanks for that. Should I get your own little Skype uh, chat over there with Vapor Caper? Adam Johnson, right? Adam Johnson, right? Yes. Look. Technology, technology. There is lots and lots of technology around today. Lots and lots of it. Um, Bluetooth is an interesting concept. There are many people who use it for little things that go in your ear so you can walk around looking as though you're talking to nobody but yourself and people take you out of context. But there's been a, an EFAG, an electronic cigarette, actually a vapor tank, if you want to call it that, has been produced that communicates with an iPhone or an iPad via Bluetooth and it's called a Smokey O, the Connected Electronic Cigarette, it says. Track your usage, what? monitor your health, it says. I'm not so sure about that bit. And what it says it next? in French as well. And it has Bluetooth and it has apps as well, would you believe? And I've got one. Unbelievable. And Chris has got one, haven't you, Chris? Yes, I've got one. There you are. And I've... I've Shall we do the unboxing thing? I'll just say it comes in a really nice box. No, let's do the unboxing thing because I'm just quite impressed with the boxing. Do you want me to do it or are you going to? Yeah, well, you, it's better you do it because you can get a better closey ups than me. So I've got closey up, you can't. I see. Right, I shall, I shall turn, turn the iPad slightly sideways. Now, just so you know, it is actually an, an iPad mini, so don't think that this is a huge box, but. It, it comes in one of those plastic outers, and Chris had a little bit of bother being able to see where to get the uh, the thumb in to get it out. But let's undo it and show you the, the box occasion lies and that it comes in, and the bits that are actually extremely disgusting, as far as I'm concerned. This is this is the box, and you've got your charging lead in there, and in there there's a bottle of zero nick menthol and. As far as I'm concerned, that's where it's staying. Yeah, but it's a nice touch. Five, 
five mils of zero nick menthol and you can tell i haven't had it out so let's have a look at it while we're on and it is i would imagine come out see it's dave proof that's before we start Eh? you can tell this is life can't you rehearsed to hell and back there's menthol i was never going to get it out there you go little five all shrink wrapped and and i tell you what if you're coming up to the the knees mate there's a prize there for somebody you can run up to me and say you are dave dawn and i claim my zero nick menthol because there's no way on the face of the planet i'm going to use it um charging lead in there and the user manual fits underneath all of that little lot folded up all nicely and it tells you exactly what you need to do which is all good all there all very <coughs> legible and all straightforward in here is where the e-cig itself was parked up in this nice you know and well let's get it out that i'm that's why i never do reviews this is the beast this is the smoke eo itself it has this uh, rather delightful ce5 which we'll get there in a minute but otherwise you would look at it and think well it just looks like a battery um, and it's a 900 milliamp hour battery very nicely put together with uh, a rather pleasant flush button and what i'm going to do very light isn't it it is yes i thought it was it is very light very very light um and it is rather a nice piece of kit look at that dog hairs everywhere well it's not it's an eyelash must be one of mine's very long um so it comes with what it comes with two ce5s as i say um and and you look at it and you think well what's so special about that and then you realize because you wouldn't have bought it otherwise that it has an app on the iphone on the iphone 5 at least and i thought what i might do would be to install it feel free to chime in anytime you like chris with anything you want to say okay mm -hmm. right oh, hello there's a lot of comments going on in chat which uh, we're not ignoring you chat. we will get around what you're all saying very shortly but in the meantime we're just gonna look at the product first yes have you have you making notes of all of these things are you no, I'm not making notes. I just know exactly what they're trying to say in here. All right. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's 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 install the app now. I've I've found it on the iPhone store, so we'll install it. And this is going to be done upside down, so that's not going to be easy. Now I shall bring it down from the cloud. And anybody... and I believe it works on um, the iPad and on the iPod. Yes, and there's a. Um, uh, Android version as well, I believe. I'm hoping that's visible. Yes, it seems to be. Now I'm just waiting for network here. There we go. It contains age related and age restricted material. You've got to be over 17. So now it's starting to load. And as I say, it works by Bluetooth. Now I'm going to be honest again, I'll open it, and say that I have had this open on this device. Yes, I'm going to allow it to see where I am. I wonder if I can zoom in on that a little bit. Just to see whether it... I'll drag everything back just a touch and then people might be able to see a little bit better what's going on. Okay. So there we go. And the instructions tell you, because it's now looking to find the smoke you itself, and it says to click the button a few times. So I'm doing that. There you go. It's found it. And it's telling you six puffs. God. Which is roughly one sig. I've just taken a draw, seven puffs. Can people say that well enough, do you think, Chris? I would think so. I haven't got the page open at the moment because it's pulling too much uh, my bandwidth down tonight. Eight puffs. Nine puffs. Ten puffs. That was a long puff and it's running out of juices this one i have been trying it if i was to open my my other devices up however when you when you get it you get to fill all sorts of things in 
and this is the page that you get to fill in and I really do hope you'll be able to see this well enough it says turn on or off GPS this is so that you can see where it is you use it and you can automatically tweet you can automatically share to Facebook there's a little button there to say I still smoke now I was smoking 40 is as much as it will go look you can do 34 but it won't let you go above 40 so I've got it set to maximum upside down um, for however many years 45 I stopped on the 17th of March a pack of 20 cost £8.50 all of this kind of stuff I use strong nicotine and so on and so forth there's all of this kind of stuff that you can fill in and that come on done done it's upside down it's not easy to do upside down done that's it and that's so that when you <coughs> click oh I might as well go there I've managed to hit the control panel and I don't know whether you can see but you can change the vapor intensity this is not helping because I'm touching the glass with my fingers there we go so that is now set to low I'll give that to you Keith and you try it and tell and here's the thing the assembled throng will know what I've set it to but you don't so don't look at the screen right so what are you wanting me to do I want you to try it all right we'll go to go to the wide shot and then I can I can mess with it I did this with my wife earlier so is that mm. it's working all right mm. okay stop thank you right I'm gonna change it or I might not have changed it now try it any difference or not no no I can't sense any difference have another drag that's talking to it or is it you might it could well be that it's uh, it's out of Bluetooth range at the minute because of all the technology that's in here but I tried it earlier with Jill and she would definitely feel a difference between the uh, the three different settings I'll go back to close you up you can't I can't <coughs> tell any difference in the vapor density and again it only allows you to go up to 20 milligrams per milliliter which again is neither use nor ornamental for me because obviously I'm using 54 a lot of the time so let's say that that's done um, and this heart thing is the bit that tells you what your health recovery has been like and it says um, I'm 78% rejuvenated and I've gained 420 days of my life back and then there's a whole <coughs> host of other information lung cancer mitigation taste and smell and there's a whole loads of graphs here about what you have and have not achieved health wise and I'm I'm a bit unsure about that I have to say and then that takes it back to the, the, the little screen that helps you on. Now, you would think that that was well and good. And this is actually, I think it's probably a good thing for people who are looking to do what ECGs are not set up to do. And that is to quit. Um, but it actually might also help people that are looking just for harm reduction. But Chris, you were saying there was some stuff coming in from chat. Yeah. All of them are pointing out, surely this is a medicinal device. It certainly feels that way. They're coming from that angle. Um, and I think they're absolutely right. It is a medicinal device. Um, it's brilliant <coughs> in its, its whole concept for somebody that is going down the quit route and has never tried an e-cig before. Um, the gadgetry and it sort of keeps them wise I mean it's, it's a bit of a cross between an evic and a and a janty mid but it's it's only giving you the health related information now where it scores a plus for me is the flavor from that tank is amazing it really really delivers flavor but where we have a slight problem, and I, I feel this will be a problem even to the quitters, 
<coughs> is the settings because the max it goes up to uh, on the the high I believe is the equivalent of 10 milligram which they think is what a cigarette delivers yeah not the kind I smoked so I feel that I'm getting the flavor without the the hit that I'm really looking for and it's obviously the um, control element between the app and the battery is limiting it to that because when I put this on to it's a CE5 you said Dave yep CE5 when I put the CE5 on to the coal fire wow fabulous just right for me so what I would like to see, and I, I realise Smokey is, is a French company, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'd like to see them up that power just a tad on the high. Yes. At least bring it up <coughs> to the equivalent of 18. I mean, they say 20, you know, you can put that you vape 20 milligram, but they're not giving you the oomph of a 20 milligram. Is the only, that's the only problem I have. But I do think it has a place out there. And I've got nothing against the quitters. I think that's wonderful if you want to quit. I just hate to see them with a cigar like. Something like that would get my absolute, you know, I would be saying brilliant, wonderful, best to look. But I'd be really worried <coughs> that they're not getting the hit that they would have had from a cigarette and they may give up on it. That's my feeling anyway. Sorry, I'm blethering on. No, and no, on no, and on. no. I, I think it's all valuable stuff. And, and I'll tell you for why. I mean, chat's taught on all sorts here. And there are all kinds of issues that crop up. Now, let me first of all say, I'm, I'm thinking about Louise Ross. Mm -hmm. And her, um, I'm going to call it pseudo-medicinal because it's not actually medicinal. It no, is, you're probably right, yeah. It, it's harm reduction. And I think something like this would be of use for those people who want to reduce the harm. I'm, I'm going to ask some questions here of chat. First off, if you're in a forum or any of the forums, how many of you have those little banners that say, I haven't had a cigarette for insert however many numbers of days, and therefore I have saved insert however many number of pounds? Um, and so on and so forth and how many cigarettes you haven't had and all of that kind of stuff and there's going to be a fair number of people I think that will have that banner on there and that in actual fact is what this application thing is doing it's, it's, it's basically giving you that banner when you wander around so That's you true. can look at it and see um, somebody said show it to Gerard Hastings on Thursday I think and this is the bit that worries me. I think Gerard Hastings would approve of this. Mm -hmm. and, and because it's moving people towards a healthier lifestyle. I also think he'll also that he might also think that it's aimed towards the kids. Because obviously <coughs> only kids have iPhones, you know. Isn't that right, Keith? Well. I just haven't been able to get my head past the the remarkable technology of it all. Uh, as you know, my technical knowledge is extremely limited, but I think that's remarkable from that point of view. Mm. It's uh, it is very clever, and it is it's it's keeping track of what I'm doing now that it's closer to it. Can I use the opportunity to have a little rant? Go for it. I keep seeing people like Glantz, um, McKee, and obviously Chapman writing their concerns about uh, dual fuelers or, or dual use yes. vapors and how concerned they are about this. Can I just say what kind of bloody idiots do they think? dual users are do they think they still have their packet of tabs 20 tabs and vape in between them don't they get it through their stupid thick heads that for every vape you have 
you are reducing the amount of smoke that you would be smoking. For Christ's sake, I cannot get over how they can't understand what a dual fueler is. It's someone who is reducing the amount of cigarettes they smoke. You keep saying, Dave, about how we self-titrate. Yes. We do. We can't sort of get, suddenly decide to take in 10 times the amount of nicotine we used to before. And it bloody well makes me see red. So I just wanted to have that little rant and get that one out there. Well, Because I see it all the time. The, th the thing is, Chris, you know, you're not wrong. And chat's agreeing. They're saying that's exactly what they do think. The, there are the likes of the Glances and the McKees and, the, the, and various others, Chapman included, that are convinced that if you smoked 20 a day before you got your hands on an e-cig, you're still smoking 20 a day and you're smoking your e-cig on yeah. top. They don't get the notion. You see, they think, <coughs> well, the smoking <coughs> ban stops people from smoking as many tabs. So Muggins here that was working all his time in smoking ban places. Muggins here would have been smoking 40 a day for a figure. And he would go and do all his work in these smoking ban places and he would cut down to 20 a day. Bullshit. I never did. Ask any of my family, ask anybody I ever worked with. As I've explained a thousand times before, when I saw ACIGs, I thought they were a great opportunity for me to be able to stay with the gear and still enjoy a tab of sorts. Mm -hmm. It meant I didn't have to go outside to have a fag because I would have gone and I did go. And I used to also take a couple of guys with me to make sure the gear was going to be all right when I wasn't there. And that used to cost me money. Now, I'm not a tight wad. I'm really not. I didn't mind paying them, but it was an awful lot more profitable for the company not to have to pay them because they didn't mm. need to be there to look after the gear. So it didn't, it, it by no means does it mean that, you, that you're going to smoke more or take more nicotine in. What it means is that you replace a given number of ordinary tabs with That's an right. e-cig as and when you need to. And it is, it's about time these buggers got to understand that. That's the way it's supposed to work. Yep. And the fact of the matter is, now, I was never a quitter, never have been a quitter, never wanted to be a quitter. I never wanted to pack fags in. I don't know how many times I've had to say this. And yet, Me it's either. been five years since I last had a fag. Mm -hmm. Five years, count them, coming up on May the 17th. It's close enough for jazz. And that's from a 60 a day, confirmed 60 a day man, to Zippo Nada Zilch None. Wouldn't thank you for one, because I enjoy e cigs more. Mm -hmm. So, yes. You're dead right, and it's about time somebody put them right. And we might get the chance to do that on Thursday as well. Um, yes, as Fuzzy Ann has said, it must be great seeing somebody with a cigarette in one hand and an e-cig in the other. Mind, I've done it. I know you have. And I've ha I've done the same with cigarettes. I've lit up to three at one time. We had two burn in the ashtray while I'm smoking the third one. Mm -hmm. But that's me, you know. <laughs> Well, they... Dual fuelers, a lot of them will stay dual fuelers, but the bigger percentage of them will get to that point where they just switch right over to the e-cig. Once they find an e-cig and a juice, because that's an important part as well, that is right for them, the chances are they'll switch without even noticing they've done it. Yes. and It's what happens. Step, Steffi, damp kicks. Uh, has asked a question. She said, Dave, did you try in between if they taste bad? I'll tell you the, the taste of soap. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the story. I'll tell you the story. I might as well. Um, as, as a few people know, it's about, it's about four years, I suppose, since my mum passed. And she was diagnosed uh, with terminal cancer uh, of the liver, as it turns out. She was told on April the 1st, so it's... Yeah, might not have been a good day to ask the question because the uh, 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 
Back to a minute. Um, sorry about that people, uh, just brought back painful memories, anyway, it's about four, four years ago, well it's three years ago, tomorrow, uh, that we got the bad news and my mum came home, brought her home the same day that, the, the, uh, that she was told, and she took the view because she'd been on e for a year and a half by then, she said right, well I'm going to die, might as well have proper fags, I said okay, fine. So I thought, being the dutiful son, I would spark one up and join her. I had two draws and I vomited. That's how bad they tasted to me after I'd been using e cigs for that length of time. And and I've got to say, and I've got to say, with that memory in mind, and you mm -hmm. you see what's what's just happening again. I do apologise. I'm so sorry. But does anybody think I'm going to go back to tabs after that? Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I do apologise. I'm sorry. I, I don't normally go crackers. But I will say, coming back to this smoke here, it seems at first like a cracker's idea. It seems at first like a cracker's idea. But thinking about it, and bearing in mind where I've just been in my own head, I'm going to say it. If that would get people like Louise Ross, like the people who think Louise is crackers, the people in other stop smoking services, if that would get them doing what Louise Ross is doing, then I'm all for it. Because it's all about choice and information. And I think that's fair enough. Do you not, Chris? I absolutely agree with you 100%. Um, I mean... I was watching chat there when you know you were so emotional and I explained to them it, it's what many of us have in common and it's one of the reasons we're fighting so hard for everyone's right to use something that is less harmful that's why we do it you know it's not for us we've done it we are here it's for others out there and that's why we are so passionate about what we do we all share a loss somewhere in our families you know where it's been smoking related we all do but we have to fight on yes actually dj reptile uk has just just posted doesn't that lead to a good reason for medical regs though no actually it doesn't um and I'm, i'll be honest i'm not alone in thinking this and i've said this before and i've said it to the people involved before and they went very very quiet if anybody was at the uh, e summit down in london in june of last year 
that have heard me get on my back feet and say that in 2008, 2009, that, that kind of period over Christmas, both Cancer Research UK and ASH UK and the Royal College of Physicians put out a press release between them. Well, they each put separate one out, but they all, th all three said the same thing. And what they said was that NRT needed to be demedicinalised, it needed to be deregulated as a medicine for the simple reason that it wasn't bloody working as a medicine, that it needed to be made more sexy, it needed to be made more available, it needed to be made more aspirational for people to want to be able to switch away from what we are told harms one in two. I don't believe that, but let's just take it for granted it does. Um, they wanted it to be easier for people to do that and because the medicines they're not right nrt just isn't and it's it's crap this this it's patently not a medicine the european parliament agrees it's not a medicine it is definitely not a medicine but they need i think and this is where implementation comes in this is where we've got to be able to to say to the powers that be right look the fact of the matter is Everything that that application says is happening, is happening. It is happening. These are not a medicine. These are a lifestyle choice. These are a way of making people reduce the risk that they run, we are told, by the mere fact that they smoke tobacco. And quite honestly, I think we have the strength to be able to do that. I really do. I think... Yeah, it, you're yeah. right, Dave. I mean, we don't need med regs. What we need is med support. Not regs. We need the support of the medics out there. And if we had that, this whole battle would be non-existent. You see, what always left a big impression on me was a few months ago when we had that Greek scientist on. Dr. Fasolinos, yes. I couldn't remember his name. And I mean, he really put it all in a nutshell, didn't he? The fact that a lot of his papers, his evidence, his research hadn't really been read properly or properly thought through. Mm. And the way he strung that all together in the few minutes that he was on, um, I thought was really quite profound. Yes, yes. No, I think, I do, I think that um, the Stop Smoking services will latch onto this. I think I, I, it's not cheap. I think it's expensive. I do think it it's, is expensive. It's expensive, but it's, it, and it's not perfect for the UK market, but it can be. I wouldn't be sitting here supporting it. When have you heard me support a bloody lookalike? Oh God! You know, quite the reverse, my dear. I'm very anti, as you well know, I'm and I certainly have never sat here and supported a quit device i've never used that word but i am supporting that i tell john john not matt has just said i personally think if it's got an apple related thing on it a lot more people will see it and benefit benefit from finding out about e probably right i can see a situation where you'd be able to buy it in the apple store because mm -hmm. they'll flog all kinds of technology in there i can see apple mm -hmm. picking up on it in fact i might email them and suggest they do I get on with them quite well. It is a good device. I'm sitting here quite happy vaping on it. Mm -hmm. You know, I could do with a little bit more oomph, but it's given me one thing that I do like. And I mean, that flavour is lovely off that CE5. Mm. It really is. No, the flavour was, uh, well, it came across really mm. as a, as a, yeah. as a a sort of tasty uh, came right through. I mean, I, I've I've got to say the flavour is marvellous for somebody who is a cloud chaser. It's not going to float your boat. This is it's not intended for me. I don't think it's not. No. It's probably not intended for you, Chris, and it's not intended for you. But I do see that there'll be a lot of people. Who were they introduced to that and told you? Yeah, oh, and there's an iPad up as well. They'd go head over heels for it. I yes. think so. Head over heels for it, and that could be a good thing. Um, all right, Lipsy's just said doesn't think Apple <laughs> would go for it. They'll come up with their own. I quit. 
<laughs> like you could. I wish they would do IFAG, but with them being <laughs> with them being America, they're, they're not they're American. They're not going to come up with that. Yeah, I think um, yes. For me, it could do with more power. I would like to see it go up to maybe four and a half volts. Allow ten or eleven watts. That would be good. Uh, controllable. I love the idea that it's controllable from the iPhone, especially if you give it to somebody to try, and you say, "Oh hell, it's a bit strong for them." You can just knock it down a bit remotely and they don't even need to know that would be that would be all good i can see um the hipsters you know the 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 hair man kind of i'm right up with technology going hey how hey uh, yeah uh -huh. so they've just literally come out now haven't yep they? first we've heard of them they, they, they've come across for us to have a look i think there's more pros than cons mm. oh yeah to be honest if they're handled right but they've got to be handled right it'll be interesting to see i'm going to take it with me on thursday because yeah. it'll be interesting to see, uh, on Wednesday rather, when we go up, it'll be interesting to see what reactions to it are. And don't tell anybody, there may be a possibility that Sav and I can actually get into the conference. We're working on that. We've, there's a little avenue that we're busily meandering down. We might be able to get into the conference, in which case live tweeting will occur. But you'll know, because we'll tweet on the way up and stuff like that. Um, and it, it'll be very, very interesting to see what the... Uh, what the Ash people think of that. I think it could be enough to sway a lot of the naysayers and gainsayers. I'm not 100% convinced about it, but on balance, I'm more to the year than the nay about the whole thing. What mm. about you, Chris? I fully agree with you, Dave. Um, it, it's a compromised product, definitely. And I think it's what, well, I'd be surprised if anybody can find anything negative to say about it, to be honest. And I'll make sure that Sav has this one right. to take with her. Um, I won't, I'll not be keen on parting with that cartridge, but anyway. Yeah. Um, there was two. <laughs> Give her oh, one. Just two. Just two. Yeah. You have one. Keep the other one for yourself. That's right. I oh. rather like that. Mm. Um, and I'll make sure I'll be getting some of those. But... Out of ten, I'm going to give that one a nine. I don't never do reviews and I never do scores out of ten, but I'm making an exception. For the quitters out there, it's a nine out of ten. Can't get better than that. There you go. Well, you were, you might have heard rustling. What are you rustling? His, well, his hobby craft bag. I've been a hobby craft. Oh, God <coughs> no. And aside from the usual Rico, I have found. Some more. Now, I couldn't get my hat on with this. When I got the hobby... You're not knitting hats, are you? No, I'm not <laughs> knitting hats. I got... When Jill wanted to go to Hobbycroft to get some threaders, and I need to talk to you about threaders, Chris. Because um, mm -hmm. I know you've got a very good one, and our eyesight's gone shut. We can't get anything through the eye of a needle anymore. Mm. Unless I've mm -hmm. had a curry. Um, so I went to Hobbycroft... And lo and behold, they've got shed loads of different cottons in. I wonder why. And I can't for the life of me understand why they would have lots and lots of various different cotton yarns in. But they have, and they're all different thicknesses and completely unbleached. Uh, this one's wider, that one's thinner. There's all different sizes. I am going to be taking them all to the knees meet. Oh, God, he's going to be oh, crushing dear. Uh, the road. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. take them to the knees, mate, because, because Max Height is coming to the knees, mate. Now, Max Height, apparently, is a coil maker extraordinaire. She's going to be bringing drills, fingernails, and God knows what. And there's going to be a, a coil and wick and cotton do hitty. What's its name? We're going to put a wick and coil and table up. And Max, <laughs> she doesn't know this yet, but I've just dropped her in. We're going to sit and we're going to coil with cotton on all kinds of things and wick with cotton so i've got these ones for people to try i thought why the hell not well there'll be plenty to go around won't there well it's you know <laughs> why not yes oh look lipsy last year you could get 700 puffs out of i quit this year apple is pleased to announce 850 puffs <laughs> <laughs> on an i7 quad core how's that well we are out ball? of time gentlemen are we oh. sorry what was that keith How's that? Is that a, a, a sort of more on that, or is it just because it's thicker? 
Yes. Right. I don't know, I'm a fella. I think some of them are sold by weight, some of them are sold by length. Um, never mind the quality. Feel the width. Feel the width. Feel oh, the width, yes. Is that... Is that <laughs> what? <Cut. laughs> yes. Uh, uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently, uh, Max Height has a big fan in uh, Entropy 72 because he said her coils are a thing of beauty. So long as she doesn't get them out in the bar. Uh-huh. 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 Um, yes. Good old BB, hobby craft. Why do I see an image of a room full of vapours drunk and tied together with yawn? I had the same image. It's not good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Cat's cradles. <laughs> Cat's cradles. <laughs> Cat's cradles. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> Yes. Time to say good night, gentlemen. Whip it up, sixty nine said, just her coils. <laughs> oh, Leanna Lawless. Apparently, the width matters, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Long and thin goes right in. Shoot it, please, the ladies. Short and thick still does the trick and gives them all the babies. That's as much as I'm saying about that. <laughs> Time to go. Time to go. Time to go, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. It has been, as per usual, a great pleasure to spend the last hour in your company. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I do apologise for my little inburst earlier on. Um, it's not like me, but these things happen. Um, tune in tomorrow night for Mark Van Basten with Vatersine. Don't miss that. And later on for our German speakers, DE Talk, which is always good if you speak German. I don't. Now what, Keith? Oh, football score for Keith. Uh, yeah, Let's I'm see. afraid it's not good news. 2-1, two, 2-1. One, two, one. Was it 2-1? Two, 2-1. One. Two, one. They're going down again. 2-1. They're going down again. Yeah, 2-1. Oh, wow. 2-1. Um, <laughs> when, Wednesday night, it'll be team talk minus Sav, minus me, because we'll be on our way. Well, we'll be in Glasgow, I hope, talking to people. Thursday, VT talk, extra special guest, in Paddy Costal and two of our Polish vaping friends.